When we forget everything, then we really don't know how to live. When we forget everything that we think we know. Then how do we know how to live? How do we know how to live as a person in this world? Without all our ideas, our beliefs, without all the knowledge that we seem to have picked up from so many clever books and people. Without grasping hold of what we think, we're left free-falling in not knowing, in not understanding. in not getting it. And usually in our world, not knowing or not understanding is considered a problem, something to fix, a gap to be filled. Usually we think that we should know and that there's something wrong with me if I don't know or if I don't understand. Most of us are desperately trying to know in our lives in order to survive. It's really quite innocent, it's just about survival. As if knowing how to live will save us. As if understanding the way it all works will protect us from feeling uncomfortable, from fear, from pain, from anything that we think shouldn't be here. And of course, innocently, we hold on to concepts and beliefs, ideas of people who have come before us our parents or teachers, authority figures that seem to know. We've trusted them to know. And often it can be quite a shock to realize that actually nobody knows. It certainly was a shock for me when I realized that. Because as a child I was trying to know to fit in because I knew very clearly that I don't know. <laughs> that was obvious. But in order to survive in the world, I looked around me and I said, well, in this world you're supposed to know. But where are you supposed to get that knowledge from? Where's the, the guidebook? And who should I listen to when they say, I know? Should I copy others? <laughs> hmm. Should I copy others when they try to know? When they seem to know? Because in just regurgitating old ideas, this never felt like a real knowing. Always felt some kind of superficial grasping. A conceptual game. Who can use the cleverest words? Who can fake that they know the best? Who can avoid exposing the truth that actually they don't know? And for years I, I felt like a fake. You know, if anyone would actually discover 
that I really don't know, then it would be really scary. But to actually admit, I don't know. I don't know how to live. I don't know who I am. I don't know what the hell is going on here. It's such freedom. Such a relief to not have to pretend, to not have to fake and not have to project some kind of image of being a certain special someone. And so, of course, surprisingly, in that wide open space, that free fall of not knowing, comes a real knowing. Not from the thinking, not from some dead old knowledge that you hold on to, but something alive. <coughs> spontaneous. Real. And you may not know what it means. You may not know how you know. But in that moment, you know. It can be very surprising. I've often found myself saying things that, wow, that's good, you know, I didn't even realize I knew that. Or suddenly, certain action becomes clear that that is what needs to happen. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know what it's going to lead to. But I know. And, and that knowing doesn't come from any old path that I've followed that leads somewhere. In letting go of everything in this absolute free fall. In the gap, in the silence, here it is. And it's such a paradox that the mind can't really grasp this. All the mind could do is try to know, or try to replicate the qualities of this spontaneous, alive knowing. The mind can say, well, I'll try to be in the moment, or be present. Which is a joke, actually because the mind can't be present. It doesn't know how. The mind can talk about being present. The, the mind can talk generally about presence or what has been happening lately, recently. But absolute presence, literally right now, there is no time. There's no time for the mind to say anything. There's no time for anything to be known or held on to mentally. So this is quite literally mind-blowing. And leaves you with nothing. Nothing to hold on to. And in that wide open space, that emptiness, nothingness, anything can come up to be felt, to be experienced. Physical sensations, emotions, thoughts, anything. Especially at first, if this free fall in not knowing is apparently new for you. Then at first there can be quite a lot of fear. Some old emotions 
that have been suppressed for a long time by thinking you know can finally have a chance to come up to the surface, to be acknowledged, to finally be felt. And even as these feelings are being felt, the mind can still come in with trying to know, trying to understand, what does this feeling mean about me? What does this feeling give me? How does this feeling refer to me? As if there is really a me that it could refer to. As if there's someone that can be protected in this life. As if there's someone that can know how to live this life. The truth is that whatever comes up, you never know what it means, where it comes from, or where it's going. But it is here to be felt. And when it's here, there's no escape. In fact, whatever is here to be felt is just longing for the attention just to feel it, not in order to get rid of it, not in order for there to be a perfect experience of never feeling uncomfortable. No, that's not going to be like, that's not be going to be the experience of this body in this lifetime. The sooner you face that, the better. The sooner you realize that this body is not meant to be perfectly comfortable. You may have already realized that. Even sitting here, probably you find, oh, there's some aches and pains, and it's not perfectly comfortable. In fact, for this body, it never seems to be absolutely perfectly comfortable. And if you're searching for perfect comfort, you'll be searching for a very long time. But in acknowledging that your true nature is this not knowing, not understanding, then even as an uncomfortable sensation comes up, it doesn't need to be understood. It just needs to be felt for as long as it's here. Maybe forever. Maybe it never needs to change. Because in this absolute not knowing, it is absolute openness, unconditional inclusivity. It includes whatever is here, whether you like it or not, whether you think it should be here or not whether it fits your spiritual ideas or not. So in this living in this world as a person, knowing that we don't know, knowing that our true nature is this wide open, unconditional inclusivity, wide open emptiness, then we don't know how to live. We don't know how to function in the world without grasping hold of our old ideas and concepts. And at first this can be frightening, but actually it is freedom. It's freedom for this lived experience, to live fully in whatever way that means for you. To play the game of being a person, even though you know, you know that you are not limited to this person, to this body. Because so often we can get lost in a kind of non-dual spaciness, where we 
forget about this lived experience with this physical body. Which of course is a, an innocent reaction to before, perhaps when we felt ourselves to be so contained and limited in this body. And we discover spirituality and we want to go beyond the body as if that will save us. And that's great to go through that stage, but then you have to come back to living with this body. Knowing that you're not limited to it. Knowing that you are not the one who is located in it. You're not the one who's inside looking out, as much as it might seem that way. But that is the play, as if you are. And in the play of this game of being this human in this world, in this life, what's to stop you from living fully and playing this game of being a person, of being a limited person? Because you can't walk through walls. There are certain limitations of being this human. The game of separation, the game of limita limitation. But it's a wonderful game, because in this game of separation, we get to meet. We get to meet as if we're separate, and then meeting. Of course, knowing that we're never really separate, so we can never really meet. But this is the game. And it's a wonderful game to, to play, this meeting game, right? The game of feeling, experiencing. It's not always perfect according to our ideas, but wow, we get to experience and feel all of this. The sensual, sensual pleasures, the sensual experiences of life, which can't be understood mentally, it's just all experienced. And as soon as we try to <clears throat> understand or to know what it all means or to put labels on things, in a way it seems to deaden the whole game. That is, if we take it, those labels seriously. But of course we can play putting labels on everything and not taking any of it seriously, then we're also free to do that. The point is, is that it's a play. A play as if, as if we are separate people, separate humans living in this world all the while recognizing that who you really are isn't limited, isn't located. And this is freedom. It's freedom to live without knowing how to live. It's freedom to feel, freedom to experience, freedom to get it all wrong, freedom to be a mess. Freedom to not be perfect. And of course, paradoxically, it couldn't be more perfect. But the mind can't do it, as much as it might try. And it's only innocently trying to survive. It's a survival tool. So there's no problem with it. It's just that it will never get it. It will never understand it. And knowing that it will never get it is a relief. Because then it can stop trying. And then here it is. 
known in not knowing.